part three, where we're going into the Proverbs rightly divided. We're looking at it not so much verse by verse, but we're looking at it theme by theme by theme, all the multiple themes that we find in the book of Proverbs. And we're finding in here that we're finding prophetic, as we should find, prophetic themes. Uh, we went through it uh, two weeks ago, and we've done a study on Proverbs before. We went and we did about a year ago. We did a, about maybe a two-hour study, an hour and a half study, on the entire book of Proverbs and Psalms. We did a broad brush study, just talking about how you can rightly divide it. You can find things in the book of Psalms for tribulation Israel, for the little flock of Israel. Just tons of information about, um, you know, the, the, what's commonly called the second advent of Christ, uh, the Antichrist, the little flock, the mark of the beast, all those different things that are in the ages to come that you find in Hebrews through Revelation. You can find them in the book of Psalms. Find just a touch of it. In the book of Proverbs, you find, you know, Acts chapter 2 and Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, we talked about that two weeks ago, but we did a, a study on that. You can see it on our YouTube channel. We did about a year ago. But uh, then two weeks ago, we started going to, as we said a little bit earlier, the book of Proverbs. We started going into um, different themes. And uh, two weeks ago, we were going through the uh, not so much verse by verse, but theme by theme study, where we started going through studying Israel's law, 613 points of law and the covenants, uh, or the covenant of uh, of God through the Proverbs. And we went proverb through proverb and seeing some good cross-references where we saw a different proverb saying, forsake not the law of God, uh, forget not the law of God. Uh, the law is light. Uh, the law brings life and health. Uh, the law is, um, you know, helps uh, inheriting substance. And when it got to, when we talked about the different Proverbs, went over the different Proverbs and studied the different Proverbs about the 613 points of law. We also started getting into some covenant information about how the wicked will not inherit the land based on the Genesis 12 covenant. You know, uh, God promised Abraham land, descendants, and that he'd always be with them. We saw some Proverbs actually saying, well, the wicked's not gonna inherit that land, uh, but the wise will inherit it and so on and so forth, the righteous will inherit it, so on and so forth. I always tell more about inheriting land, substance, wives, and field, and cattle, and so on and so forth, which is what God talks about in the prophetic program to Israel. Uh, so there's Proverbs referring to this Genesis 12 covenant uh, with Israel. We saw this in the book of Proverbs. We saw about the blessings of a righteous man is this, and the cursings of the wicked are this, so blessings and cursings, which come up with Moses, you know, cursed, cursed be thee if you do this, blessed be thee if you do that. That's, again, the, the um, covenant that you find in Genesis 12, which leads into the layout in Leviticus chapter 26. You're blessed if you do this, Israel. You're cursed if you do that, Israel. And so you see a lot about that in um, Leviticus 26 and Genesis 12, which lead into these Proverbs. That, of course, we know King Solomon is writing to his son, King Rehoboam, trying to teach him, you know, there's some things you need to know. And so I'm going to write to you in these Proverbs that will teach you you know, all sorts of wisdom that in this prophetic time period, he'll need to be a good king and how he can use this to teach and help and guide Israel during you know, all sorts of different times that are going on. So he's saying this here, and we went through that two weeks ago. We went over the law and the covenants, Proverbs dealing with that. And that was two weeks ago. And we came to the conclusion that the law is, you know, obeying the law is going to be that wisdom for Israel. And so, of course, Proverbs dealing with wisdom came to the conclusion, you know, right standing with God is going to be wisdom. Here's how you deal with that. Obe obedience to the law is going to be wisdom. Here's how you deal with that. So then that led to last week's study, which was uh, if you're in a covenant standing with God, uh, you may have, or it's good to have, the fear of the Lord. And so as you go through the book of Proverbs, you're going to find proverb after proverb after proverb dealing with the fear of the Lord. You know, Israel had that fear where if they were in a uh, blessings and cursing situation, they could be excuse me, they could be cursed by God, knowing that God could you know uh, send locusts and plagues and um, have the earth swallow them up whole, and uh, could send all sorts of things according to you know terrible things according to the covenant uh, that could destroy them or hurt them or do things that were bad to them if they did not behave right, if they did 
bad works or no works or wrong works or things that were not according to the agreement they made with God and Mount Sinai. So we saw that the fear of the Lord was the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord was the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord was uh, was you know, things we saw where they, if they reap righteous fruit uh, based on having that fear of the Lord, it would be a good thing that would help them and guide them through these through their covenant standing with God. We saw that they're not to be wise in their own eyes. Um, that was some things that the fear of the Lord said, you know, were they to have that. They would understand having uh, the fear of the Lord, they're not to be wise in their own eyes. And they were to understand that. They were not to envy sinners. Uh, you know, so they were to use wisdom, this wisdom that Solomon was giving, and that they were to, you know, if anything, cleave to that wisdom, this uh, wisdom that Solomon is talking about, and wisdom in general that we were seeing, uh, more so that uh, with the wisdom of God. And, and so we know that we have a lot more wisdom than what they have. We have the manifold wisdom of God. We see that in Ephesians chapter 3. We have hidden wisdom now revealed. We have Solomon's wisdom we have the wisdom of the law. We have all sorts of wisdom we can go through in the scriptures, rightly divide, study, learn, and grow from. Uh, we're just looking at the wisdom of Solomon through the Proverbs now and finding all sorts of themes that pop up in it for Israel. But all in all, uh, with the entire Bible in our hands, we have the manifold wisdom of God. So this is just one of the many folds of wisdom that we have at our disposal. So two weeks ago, we were looking at the Law and the Covenants and the themes that go with that. A week ago, we were looking at the fear of the Lord, Israel's fear of the Lord. This week, we're seeing how King Solomon is going to be teaching King Rehoboam uh, some certain topics. And some of them are going to be justice and judgment, Levitical justice and Levitical justice, uh, sorry, Levitical justice and Levitical judgment that a king is going to need to have if he's going to be ruling a nation. And so this is what Solomon is going to be teaching Rehoboam through the Proverbs, and we're going to be going through and we're going to be seeing you know, that the uh, justice uh, that he's going to need to be able to uphold is based on the 613 points of law. We'll take a look at that. We'll see that a little bit later. Different laws and the judgment that the king is going to need to have in order to rule a nation. You know, why a wise king? It's going to be based on God's covenant with Israel, which is something we went back to two weeks ago and we studied the law and the covenant. So we're going to be seeing this week, you know, justice and judgment that a king is going to need to have. And we'll see some examples you know, uh, of that as well. So we'll either be looking at some cross references with other Proverbs in the book of Proverbs, or we'll be going to some laws that deal with the Proverbs we're looking at, but we'll just be going through the entire Bible looking at how these Proverbs of justice and judgment, prophetically and Levitically, uh, are going to be dealt with, how this works out, these Proverbs work out, and how uh, you know, King Rabbon can look back into uh, Israel's history or Israel's books and see how, these, uh, how this wisdom can work out in his behalf, were he to use it. Nonetheless, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get that started. So we're seeing how uh, this is going to be justice based on the laws of God and judgment based on the covenants. So we'll start with the justice part of it. We'll break it down into justice and judgment. We'll go into justice. And so we're seeing here the idea of you know, biblical justice, godly justice, Levitical justice, is that sin is not only recognized, but it doesn't go unpunished. And so we see, you know, no matter what. And so this is different than the types of justice we have say, in our society today, where we've got things called social justice or this other type of justice or whatever kind of justice you can think of. You know, and we think that somehow, or different groups think somehow that if you can somehow do bad and it can end up in a, it can somehow end up doing good, then that's justice. That's just a just thing to do. If I can end up, you know, doing something wicked and wrong and bad and evil, and it ends up, you know, the ends justify the means, and it's all good in the end, then it doesn't matter that I did bad. It's all just in the end, and that's that's not right. That's, that's actually wrong. Uh, but when we look at how God deals justly and how he's teaching, in this case, Solomon is teaching Rehoboam justice, that's, he's not going to teach Rehoboam to be bad in order to get good, uh, like we see in our society today. Uh, the law stated... For example, if we look at Leviticus, we'll start there. 
some of these things, some things that are how he shows uh, all of Israel how to be equal with everybody mm-hmm. and not to show diverse uh, favor with different people. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 35. And we're going here because we're going to see some Proverbs dealing with this. Leviticus uh, 19, verse 35. And what we see here, when it comes to uh, judgment and justice and so forth, what we see here is is that the, you know, the law stated this. Uh, it says, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. And so we see the series says in uh, mid yard, in weight, or in measure. Just balances, just weights, just ephah, just him shall ye have. I am the Lord uh, your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And he says, therefore ye shall observe uh, all my statutes and all my judgments, and do them, I am the Lord. Nonetheless, you've seen that in Leviticus, uh, chapter 19, verse 35, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Everything is to be just. Everything is to be equal. Everything is to be balanced. Uh, and, and proper you know, thought and proper wisdom and proper everything. Everything needs to be balanced. There is to be no unequal weights. There is to be no unequal, uh, you know, everything's to be just balanced and just weights. We see this here starting out in the law, working its way into where we're heading into in Proverbs. If you look at Exodus chapter 23 in verse 7, and that's Exodus 23 verse 7, we're starting out in the law to see that these things are starting with the law, and working its way into the Proverbs, um, this idea of justice. Exodus 23, verse 7 says, Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. You know, today, in many societies, the wicked are justified. It says, For I will not justify the wicked, and thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise, and perverteth the words of the righteous. And so we see that this is something that takes place here. We're saying that shall take no gift. A gift can actually blind. You know, if you take a bribe, you take a gift, you take something, it can blind your judgment. And so this is taught all the way back in Exodus, which is what we're about to see as this plays out in uh, the book of Proverbs. And so some other things we won't uh, turn to it exactly, but I leave this out for, for your own uh, personal study, is that we see that judges themselves could be judged. That's Psalm 82. I'll leave that psalm for you to, to look up. And they can also themselves face judgment. It also happens in the book of Ezekiel as they're watching. Uh, there's also a day of judgment for believers. We know as the church, the body of Christ, we have the judgment seat of Christ. We're not going to be judged for sin, but we will be judged uh, of what kind of works we had after we were saved. Uh, there's also unbelievers. They'll have the great white throne where they'll be judged as well. And so God's justice is the, about the prevention of uh, wickedness and the literal punishment of evildoers. And so you'll see justice and judgment come up almost side by side as we go through these different Proverbs, which we're about to do now. But I want to show even beforehand that justice and judgment show up in Levitical issues. They show up in the law. They show up as, as points that are in the law, which we just saw in Leviticus chapter 19. Uh, they'll show up there and they'll lead their way into the book of Proverbs. And so this is how they're going to show up the way that they do. So some ideas of justice, which you can also kind of associate with judgment. Again, they're kind of almost side by side in this, is you know, the justice that was done to Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3 when they rebelled. Now, they rebelled and God didn't just say, oh, don't worry about it. He said, no, there, there has to be a just dealing of what, what's happened here. And so in Genesis 3, they're dealt with. Uh, in uh, the book of Job, uh, you also see this as well. If you look at Job chapter 8, verse 1, you'll see what gets said here. Job chapter 8, verse 1. Oops. We just kind of mentioned a little bit of Adam and Eve in Genesis. Uh, Job chapter 8, verse 1, goes on to say, uh, and this is about Bildad the Shuhite, he says, How long wilt thou speak these things, and how long shalt the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Does God pervert judgment, or doth the Almighty pervert justice? As he's explaining his case and everything that's happening with Job, his point that he wants to make is, you know, God is not someone who perverts judgment. God is not someone who perverts justice. So he makes this point, though, during this time of, uh, even in Job's time, this is a point that's made. No, God is 
perfect and righteous and omniscient and omnipotent, he's not going to go ahead and pervert justice and judgment, much like society does, very, you know, man-made society. So we know this to be true, just as it's done in Adam and Eve. Uh, this was said in the book of Job. Uh, we know from Noah and all of mankind with the flood, by Genesis 8, you've got a worldwide flood that is all about justice and judgment. I uh, see that there. Sodom and Gomorrah in uh, Genesis 19. There's justice done there, and there's judgment done there. Uh, even in, um, I believe it was King Cyrus in the book of Ezra. We look at Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. You'll see another example there, which is not commonly brought up. But Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. You'll see something made mention here. <clears throat> um, it's chapter 1, verse 1. What we're looking at here is mainly about, I believe it's Cyrus. It says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of uh, Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also into writing. And then he goes on saying certain things. But what he's doing is he's also he's helping out during this time uh, Israel after their uh, Babylonian captivity, helps them to rebuild their temple. Now he's he's uh, he's not a, a Jewish king, but yet he's someone in spite of Genesis chapter twelve verses one through three. He goes forth and he says, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll help you out a little bit. And so the Lord, as we read through what happens in Ezra and what happens over, he's he's you know allowed to go ahead and uh you know temporarily flourish as a result he he helps israel and he's therefore as he blesses israel he's therefore blessed you know the covenant you know plays itself out like it should so we see different examples throughout the bible and there's a lot more than this this is just a couple of examples of justice and judgment that we're seeing here so uh, finally we get into you know the problems this was you know quite you know, a long-winded opening but this is kind of where we were looking to go just to get to where we needed to get. And we go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. And so we're going to see some, um, in this first example, we're going to see some cross-references that are going to lead us into different uh, books here. But we see here, uh, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. So we see that in verse 3, you know, the reason of, you know, why would we need to know these Proverbs anyway? Or in this case, the audience being Israel, why would they need to know, to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding? To receive the instruction of wisdom and uh, justice and judgment. So there's that justice and judgment right there. saying so that in order to perceive it, in order to understand it, and to understand how to present or, or to uh, dispense, let's call it, of all words, dispense justice and to dispense judgment, uh, you know, this would be uh, given here to perceive the words of understanding, to perceive it, and how, not only to perceive it, but how to do it. And for example, how we'll see this play out, if we look at uh, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 15. 2 Samuel uh, chapter 8, so where this comes up. In verse 15, then you get to King David. Now here's, here's a good king. This is you know, not uh, King Rehoboam's father, but more so his grandfather. And you see here in verse 15, 2 Samuel 8, 15 says, And David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. So we see an example here of a king who properly did what he needed to do. And then as this got passed on to Solomon, Solomon is now teaching Rehoboam. And so this is something that goes back generations, in, in this case, of Rehoboam's you know, lineage, you're going to call it. But David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice. You know, this was something that he did as he ruled and as he reigned. So we see that there. And as we go to uh, 1 Kings, 1 Kings uh, chapter 10, verse 1. Another cross-reference here. First Kings chapter 10, verse 1, we see an example of uh, understanding and presenting justice and judgment. We see the example where this is actually being played out with a king, King David, King Solomon, and now this is being given to King Rabbo. 
First Kings, uh, yeah, First Kings chapter ten, verse one. And when they talk about receiving the instruction of, of uh, justice and judgment, here's where they down, not only receive it, but then they go ahead and dispense it. And it says here, and when the queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name uh, of the Lord, he, uh, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of uh, all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything uh, hid from the king, which uh, he told her not. And when uh, the queen of uh, Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built and the meat of his table and the sitting of, uh, of his servants and the attendance of his uh, ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words to, until I came, and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I, had, which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are uh, these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loveth, or loved Israel forever, Therefore, uh, made he the king to do judgment and justice. All this is read for a point to see that in the end, what you're seeing here, he made Solomon king, as he made David king, to uh, do judgment and justice. Just as King David is executing judgment and justice, so is Solomon doing judgment and justice. And he's making sure that his son carries on just like his father did, to do judgment and justice. And this is the first part of where we're at, uh, those two cross-references we see, in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, uh, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. And so this is just the first one of those cross-references. You see where kings are doing these things. Kings not only receive the instruction, but then they carry it out. So we saw that there in Proverbs chapter 1, verse uh, 1 through 3, the idea of the, re the receiving of justice and judgment, then carrying it out. So we see that there. Now if we go to the next thing in regards to uh, justice, you know, and this is all based on uh, the obedience of you know, the laws of God. We look at uh, Proverbs chapter eight, verse twelve. Remember, when these kings are obeying God and they're doing what they should do, and they're executing this justice and they're executing this judgment, more so if we're looking at the justice part of it, they're doing this in accordance with what the law has to say. And just as we had said earlier, we were reading about this in Leviticus chapter nineteen. How this was something that needed to be done. Uh, fairly and justly and everything else, they're going to go to the law to see how justice needs to be done according to whatever situation comes up. But in Proverbs chapter 8, in verse 12, we're seeing how uh, justice is decreed by a king. And so we see Proverbs eight twelve says, uh, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy in the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. And so we see that there in verse 15. By me, which would be the concept of wisdom, uh, sound wisdom, strong wisdom, kings reign, and pr princes decree justice. So this is what we're seeing, that princes are going to be decreeing justice by means of having the wisdom that they should have in order to guide and rule and do everything we saw with what we saw previously, King David, King Solomon, and now King Rabbalm, and, and so on and so forth, if they adhere to justice, if they adhere to what they should adhere to, uh, using wisdom. So we see this here, uh, you know, by wisdom, um, you know, these things. And so we're going to see Solomon get into a example of where he uses this. He decrees justice, like we see in Proverbs uh, 8.15. If we look at um, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. Here's where we see King Solomon you know, that comes up in his own courtroom. And uh, you may have heard of this one, you may have read this before or seen this. 
It says, uh, let me see if we got this uh, set up according to where we should. Yeah. It says here, then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And uh, the one woman said, O my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with uh, her in uh, the house. And it came to pass the third day, uh, after that I was delivered, and this woman was delivered also. And we were together, and there was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night, because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight, and took my son from beside me, while thy handmaid slept, and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning, I gave my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was uh, not my son, which I did bear. Near the woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And he said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, uh, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and this is... Uh, the son, uh, and thy son is the dead, and the other said, Nay, but the son is the dead, and the son is the living. The king said, Bring me a sword. And then he brought the sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose uh, the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O oh, my lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. The king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, for they feared the king, and they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. And so we see this idea again of judgment taking place, justice taking place for the situation that comes up before King Solomon in his own courtroom, where there's two women saying, Well, the, we had two children, one's dead and one's living, and each each uh, lady says, well, no, that's my son. The dead one is your son, the live one is my son. And so we see how this plays out, and you might have heard this one before. But we see justice and judgment being played out according to wisdom. This is the example that is needing to be used by Israel in all their situations. If not, uh, you know, if we can apply a uh, spiritual lesson and uh, this would be the type of wisdom we would want to use for, you know, we wouldn't have something this dramatic most likely come up. But if we did, we'd want to use this type of wisdom in our situation as well today, whatever it is. So we see this here. And so when this comes out, we're seeing by wisdom, princes decree justice. We're seeing this with King Solomon. Now, the Lord will do this too. It's Jeremiah 23. We won't have you necessarily turn to it, but it's Jeremiah 23. And so by wisdom, princes decree justice. And so we're seeing justice continuously play out, whether it be by receiving the instruction of justice, princes decree justice. If we look at Proverbs, uh, we'll continue in chapter 20, verse 8. I continue through the Proverbs, looking at different Proverbs about justice. Proverbs 20, verse 8. And this goes back to what we were seeing when it came to the law. As we were saying earlier, justice is based on the law. We saw this in Leviticus chapter 19. Now we're seeing it again as mm -hmm. what we saw in Leviticus 19 is now being played out in Proverbs chapter 20. We see it in verse 8. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure for my sin? Diverse weights and diverse measures, both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. So again, we're seeing this idea of diverse ways and diverse measures, which we saw in Leviticus 19. That good cross-reference there shows that just as there's laws against diverse weights and diverse measures, we're seeing the proverb says as uh, one word to continue to have diverse weights and diverse measures, uh, that would be an abomination to the Lord. And so a proverb is made about this, you know, under inspiration of the Holy Ghost, given from Solomon to Rabbal. So you know, don't do this. Both of them are like abomination to the Lord. He says this here, you know, it's not good, you know, just weights. And uh, let me see if we got some more. If we look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. And we see more about this. This concept that comes all the way from Leviticus uh, 19, coming from the law, these Proverbs that are based on the law, and this idea of, of things being just, just weight, you know, justice and a just weight, just, uh, you know, him and just ephah. Um, the idea of the opposite having you know, false weights, false balances, everything else are no good. And so we see in uh, Proverbs 11, verse 1, 
A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So we see this come up again in uh, Proverbs 11, verse 1. If you go to Proverbs 16, 11, comes up again. Proverbs 16, 11 goes on to say, a just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of it, uh, I'm sorry, all the weights of uh, the bag are his work. So again, it comes up again. Just weights are a right thing. Unjust weights and false balances are, you know, based on what we see from Leviticus 19, very bad thing. And so you know, to have things equal and right and balanced are a good thing. So we see that there. Uh, so it plays out there. And Proverbs 20, verse uh, 23. Proverbs 20, verse 23 says, Diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. So again, we see this again, whether it's a, a just weight or justice is done even, even unto the weights uh, that a king would have in his kingdom or whatever is a good thing. But a false weight and unjust balance is, is a very bad thing. It's not good. You see that there. If we look at Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 13, we saw a little bit in Leviticus. Have a look at Deuteronomy 25, verse 13. I believe as we saw it there, Deuteronomy 25, verse 13, we saw Leviticus come up once. We'll see here again in Deuteronomy. Just to confirm, we're seeing it come up again and again, this concept in the law, which is what we want to see. Deuteronomy 25, verse 13. It says here, thou shalt not have in thy bag diverse weights, great and small. Thou shalt not have in thine house diverse measures, by great and small. But thou shalt have perfect, a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And so it says, for all that do such things and do, and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So again, you see this play out in Deuteronomy 25, verse 13, 14, 15, and 16, talking about how important it is to have things just, to have things right, to have things balanced, and to have that justice, even when it comes to the idea of, of the weights you carry in uh, your house, uh, to things uh, for Israel and their kingdom, for Israel and their land. And it even goes forth to say, uh, to do so would have your days lengthened in the land that you're in. Now, these are not heavenly promises. We're not promised any land on earth. So therefore, we see as Deuteronomy 25, Leviticus 19 plays out with Proverbs chapter 20, Proverbs chapter 16, Proverbs chapter 11, that all these cross-refer into one thing where it's right to be just and have that proper justice as it's taught to a king, as it's given from the Lord, as it's taught from Solomon to Ramon, all this is proper and right justice, Levitical justice. So we see this here. That just continues to play, and falsehood is a very wrong thing. So as we continue with justice, we'll just see a few more, and kind of move into judgment after justice, although these are very similar in theme, which is why we're looking at all of it today. I will look at Proverbs 21, verse 3. And this comes up quite a bit. We've seen this in the scriptures. It's in the book of Hosea, but we won't turn to it, uh, not this week at least. Uh, we see that Proverbs 21.3 says to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And there's all sorts of uh, scriptures we can turn to. We'll just look at a couple now where people sacrifice bulls, goats, lambs, uh, and they do it with the wrong heart because their idea is not to do it for the point of right judgment or even for the sake of justice to have their sins paid for by what God tells them to do according to the law. Uh, they do it just because it's the, the routine thing to do. It's just the religious thing to do. Their heart's not in it. Their mind's not set in it. They do what they just need to do and get it over with, and let's get back to life as we know it, even if it's a sinful life as we know it. They don't care. And so it says that uh, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable. Justice and judgment is far more acceptable than just routine sacrifice. Again, I just I, I read that into it just now, but acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Literally, the words on the page there. So we see that there. So, for example, if we'll look at some of the... Actually, I'll give some of the cross-references here just for this theme. But uh, 1 Samuel 15, uh, actually, I'll 
I'll turn there and I'll read that uh, verse out to you. First Samuel fifteen twenty two. That reads, uh, Samuel said, "Hath the Lord uh, as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? For hold to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams." This is what Samuel was saying to the audience in his time. And I'm saying to Saul, and he says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, uh, he hath also rejected thee from being king, as he says this to Saul. This proper, that would be King Saul. And as he does this, he's saying, Samuel keeps saying, look, um, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as just in obeying his voice when, you know, and prophetically uh, not today in the dispensation of grace uh, the Lord would speak and they would need to hearken unto the voice as he would literally speak whether it be speaking unto a prophet speaking from you know an angel would speak for him um, a prophet would speak for him whatever it may be and as God would speak they would say it would be better for you to obey the voice you hear from the prophet or the angel from God himself than to just continuously do things mindless, not knowing why you're doing it or not caring that you're doing it. So we see that there, and that's the point of Proverbs 21.3. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So that's something that King Saul didn't learn, that King Solomon is helping King Rehoboam. We see that there. So some other verses that come up is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11 through 17. And that's the one where uh, Israel was uh, idolatrous in their society and their culture. And they kept sacrificing everything. God had to say, look, I'm filled to the brim with all of your sacrifices. And it means nothing to me now because what you're doing means nothing to you now. You're just doing everything that's unfilled with your uh, you know, vain oblations. Incense is an abomination of it. It's not that incense was bad, it's what they were doing with Saul. They weren't hearkening to his voice. They weren't listening to his words. They weren't doing what he said. Uh, you know, there was no justice in what was being done. They weren't just in what they were doing. Um, they weren't doing justice and judgment. They were just mindlessly sacrificing things. Sounds like religion today. But uh, what we we'll go on to see is in, in Jeremiah 7, he says, just obey my voice, Israel, just obey my voice. Uh, Justice, when it's done, is to be done for the afflicted and for the needy in Jewish society. That's Psalm 89. And it's the habitation of thy throne, even as it's described. And that's Psalm 119, um, verse 121. Uh, we see that there. I might be off by one, but that's where we see the same. And he says, I have done it. That is what we see in these verses here. So we see this in these uh, Proverbs here, Psalm 82, Psalm 89, Psalm 119, the Psalms even mention justice and judgment, more so the justice that we're looking at. But if we continue in the book of Proverbs, and we'll look at Proverbs 24, verse 23. Proverbs 24, verse 23, we see no, there's no justice when there's wrong judgment. And Proverbs 24, verse 23 says, uh, these things belong, or I'm sorry, these things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. And nations would be a right thing to say in this verse because it's all about earthly people, earthly issues, earthly land, earthly citizens, uh, nations shall abhor him. It's not about the body of Christ. It's not about heavenly places, heavenly issues. It's about the nations. The nations will abhor. Uh, but if that's if they have, you know, corrupted judgment, which leads to corrupted justice. So we see that there. There's no justice in wrong judgment. That the perverting of justice and judgment, uh, we can read all about that in the book of Isaiah. And I'll just give out the chapters. Isaiah 58, verse 2. Isaiah 59, verse 4. And Isaiah and um, Isaiah's fallen society around Israel, where the Babylonian captivity keeps getting closer and closer, even in the Assyrian one as well. Uh, they just don't, they don't find justice. They don't find the justice they're looking for because the society is so corrupt. So we see that there. So we're seeing some of the proverbs 
that lead and talk about justice, Levitical justice in Israeli society. And so this is, these are the Proverbs dealing with this topic that Rehoboam would do well to learn. If he learns this, he's going to do well in the topic of justice that Solomon wants him to learn according to the law. You know, Leviticus uh, 19 and uh, Deuteronomy 25, you see these things. So if we go and we'll now see what Paul has to say about justice. Our Apostle Paul with the Church of the Body of Christ, now there's some things he's going to say. Now, if we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, now where is it that we're going to see how justice is dealt with in the dispensation of grace versus Proverbs in the dispensation of law? Now, it's going to be 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. And we see here, justice. It says, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ that be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we see there, when we want to see uh, information about uh, what was, uh, I would say, the idea he's the just and the justifier, we'll see that there. But we want to see where was this justice done, or where was this, I would say, so much just about where was this, where was the point where sin was paid for? And uh, yeah, we're not going to look into the blood of bulls and goats and calves, as we would see this in the Proverbs based on Leviticus, or based on Deuteronomy, or based on anything else. We're going to look at the cross, and we're going to see that there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to see this uh, here. This is what Paul will say. If we look also at Romans chapter 11, verse 32. We'll take a lesson from this. Now, Romans chapter 11 mostly talks about Israel, but there is a point that is made here in Romans chapter 11, verse 32, that I just want to take a, a, a point from. And we see there, that it's mostly it is talking all about Israel, but there's a lesson we can learn from this for, for all of us today. And it says here in Romans 11, verse 32, says, For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. When it comes to the idea of judgment, justice, and being just, he's concluded all of us in unbelief, or he concluded us all guilty, that, uh, we, that he might have mercy on all. We had to be declared guilty first, that we would have grace poured upon us second. Uh, so we see this, this concept in Romans eleven thirty two. So we see this played out here. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 25. And these are just some of the things that Paul says. Where do we look? Where do we want to find uh, things like this? Romans 3, 25 says, Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So we're seeing that God is just and he's the justifier as well. We're seeing, you know, if we want to look at who's just, uh, it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to see where did this happen? It was at the cross, 2 Corinthians 5. So we see how this take place here. And of course, where is boasting then? It is excluded. You know, but by what law? And we know it's not by the law. By uh, what law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. If you want to say if anything, you know, the law of faith is, uh, you know, you're not going to go to any one of the 613 points of law per se, but it's going to be by the, by the fact of faith, the law of faith, the statement of faith, the idea of faith, the law of faith. So, so therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So we're seeing this is what Paul is saying concerning these things. So as we rightly divide, we compare and contrast, we see the idea of justice. Uh, we're seeing all these proverbs that are dealing with Levitical justice as it's based on the law. And this is what is taught to uh, King Solomon. I'm oh, sorry, King Rehoboam from King Solomon. So we'll go into the next part, uh, which is judgment. You know, we were looking at justice, now we want to look at judgment. So we're seeing based on God's covenant now, not so much the law, though we will see some parts of the law. Uh, based on God's covenant with Israel, God exists as the true and righteous judge of over all his creation, all the time. There's multiple judgments in the Bible. We can find it all throughout Scripture. Uh, we're specifically looking at you know, judgment with uh, King Solomon teaching King Rehoboam about Levitical judgment. He's going to use it through the Proverbs. 
And so it's going to come up here. And so it's, again, based on you know, the uh, Proverbs, and it's going to be based on, uh, say, Genesis chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 3, the covenant, where it's going to be dealing with issues having to do with land and inheritance and inhabitants and descendants and God being with them through blessings and curses and so on and so forth uh, all throughout uh, the scripture. So this is based on God's covenant with Israel as opposed to God's law, uh, 613 points of law, though we might see a little bit of it here and there. Uh, some things we can see. If we look at Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Speaking of the law, Deuteronomy 7, uh, verse 9. Says there, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And so we see there he keeps, this is God who keeps covenant with everything. Uh, more so in mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments for a thousand generations. So we see this start out there. If you go to Deuteronomy 16, just a couple chapters later, Deuteronomy 16, verse 19. God's going to be keeping covenant in the book of Proverbs, as, as he should. Deuteronomy 16, verse 19 goes on to say that thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift, for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. Uh, thou which, uh, that which is altogether just shalt thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So again, we see a lot in these two verses here, just in, the, in uh, Deuteronomy uh, 16, verses 19 to 20, you're seeing thou which is altogether just, I'm talking again, the concept of justice we just went through, uh, we're seeing there that it's going to be about uh, you know, not, um, not taking a gift per se and allowing your judgment to be right. And if that happens, you inherit the land which the Lord thy God will give it to you. The land, that's not part of Genesis chapter 12 we went over two weeks ago. Land, inheritance, inhabitants, descendants, uh, the Abrahamic covenant of Genesis chapter 12. It goes back into this as we plug ourselves back into the Proverbs. This is what's going to become concerning judgment. You know, right judgment will lead to uh, the proper uh, pieces of the covenant, which God says, I'm going to be the one who gives you, uh, you know, I'm going to uphold the covenant through generation generation, as he says in Deuteronomy 7. So we see this play out here, uh, this concept of judgment. Uh, this is going to be something that happens here. But if we look and we'll go back in Proverbs chapter 2, in verse 7, we'll start looking into the Proverbs here concerning judgment. There's going to be a lot of this. And we may have to skip through some of this just for time's sake. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7. And it goes on to say, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Uh, he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment. You see that there? He preserveth the way of his saints. Thou uh, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. So when it comes to the idea of laying up sound wisdom for the righteous, this is something that Israel is going to want to do according to their covenant. As they go forth and they do that uh, which is right according to uh, their covenant, they are in good covenant standing with God. God will lay up sound wisdom for the righteous. As they do that, they'll be able to understand. He'll uh, uh, be a buckler for them that walk uprightly. Again, according to covenant standing, he'll keep the paths of judgment and preserve the way of his saints in covenant standing. As they you know, do so, this is what will happen. It says, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment. As they lay up uh, that wisdom, or as God lays up that wisdom, they'll understand what they need to do with understanding and wisdom and righteousness and judgment and equity. So it goes on saying this part here in Proverbs 2. Uh, if we look at Proverbs 8.20, I believe we looked at this a little bit earlier, but we'll use this as a cross-reference uh, once again for this verse. Proverbs 8.20 says, I lead in the way of righteousness. There's that way of righteousness again, cross-referring to what we just saw, uh, in the midst of the paths of judgment, uh, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. So again, 
inheriting substance would be a right thing, health and wealth and everything else, blessings, not cursings, according to a Genesis 12 covenant, would be something that um, would be a right thing for the audience in the book of Proverbs. The land and substance and increase and everything else would come along with this. So we see this here, keeping the paths of judgment, wisdom and everything else, wisdom and judgment keeps the path of the righteous. You see that there, it preserves their way. Look at Proverbs chapter three, verse 19. Proverbs 3, 19. It was under read, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding, he hath established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down with dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul, and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lay down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. And again, this goes back to what we were seeing in those previous verses. Talking about in verse 23, Then shalt uh, thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. We were seeing in Proverbs 2, 7 about keeping the paths of judgment through sound wisdom. Uh, we were seeing this here. Uh, you know, when they keep those paths of judgment, when it's all about you know, righteous judgment and that sound wisdom abides, then uh, they'll be able to go ahead and walk in thy way safely. Uh, we saw that the way is preserved in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 20. And now we're seeing it in Proverbs chapter 3, how this continues to play out. This is a common theme where they lay up sound wisdom, they keep it, they walk righteously in their covenant standing, then they'll go ahead and uh, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid, yea, thou lie, shall lie down, and thy sleep shall even be sweet. So we're seeing it's a matter of them having that wisdom, keeping it, and walking in good standing. So that's Proverbs chapter 2, verse uh, 7. If you look at Proverbs 13, verse 23, going all the way back to the concept of judgment, it's going to play out in a different way here. Proverbs 13, verse 23, says, Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that in, dis uh, I'm sorry, but there is that is uh, destroyed for want of judgment. So again, this idea is it's being it's judgment being used in another way. It's this idea of uh, levitical judgment. Uh, tillage means farming or cultivation, just to use some synonyms with that word tilling. So this or tillage. But uh, much food is in the tillage or the cultivation, the farming, of the poor. But there it is that that is destroyed for want of judgment. So you don't you don't start using your judgment on when you should be storing or farming or plowing or reaping or sowing or whatever it is in this case, uh, for want of judgment, you know, things, things can get pretty bad pretty quick. Uh, so in other words, you know, sound judgment is a right thing. But you see this even in the book of Proverbs, let alone when we get to the body of Christ. So no matter where you look at in scripture, using sound judgment is never a wrong thing. You don't see it anywhere where it says, oh, don't use any judgment, or we shouldn't be judging. Uh, you see it here, and we'll see it even in the book of John later on. It says, uh, you sound judgment, or judge righteous judgment. But we see that here in Proverbs 13, 23, about uh, even when it comes to, you know, much food in the, is in the tillage of the poor. When they work, you know, they'll work for, the, for much food. They'll have it. Uh, but when they don't use judgment, when anyone doesn't use their judgment, that's going to be a bad thing towards any type of situation. And that's the point being made. If you look at Proverbs, just go back one chapter, Proverbs chapter 12 in verse 11. And it says, he that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. And again, farming or whatever it is. But he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. There's time to work and a time to uh, till or farm or cultivate. And instead, you go following a vain person rather than doing what needs to be done. Uh, it talks about the, your void of understanding. You know, instead of putting off that vain person, your void of understanding, that's not going to be good. So we see that there in uh, Proverbs 12, uh, verse 11. And then if we continue, and we'll see here, i uh, get there myself. Lost my place for a moment. Uh, verse 14, Proverbs 12, 14. 
continues on again, and it says, A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. Again, more about tillage and, and uh, things that do to, to build up what build up by their own works, by their own hands. So we see that there. Look at Proverbs 27 in verse uh, 18. This theme of sound judgment or good, right judgment being a good thing if you continue in it and a bad thing if you don't continue in it is mentioned as well. So that's uh, Proverbs 27, verse 18. It says, Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. So we see this mentioned here, this idea of you know, working and, and everything else, you know, using that sound judgment. It's going to come in here. Uh, Proverbs 27, verse 23, uh, goes on to read, uh, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation? The hay appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and the herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are for the price of the field, are the mm -hmm. price of the field. And thou shalt have goats, milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance of thy maidens. Talking more about you know, using that sound judgment, whether it be for the tillage, whether it be for the cultivation, whether it be for the farming, you're seeing, you know, be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks. You've got to be using that judgment to know the state of what's going on with, say, your property, your flocks, your, uh, you know, your diligence, your hay, your lambs, everything else. Uh, in this case, and again, when I say your, this is Solomon talking to Rehoboam about his property, and so on and so forth. And he's going to need to be, he's going to need to have that diligence, that judgment, as he goes forth with this. And then we're seeing just different ideas. Um, this is just the idea that pre presents itself multiple times through the Proverbs. We the poor need to have judgment as they till, or have that tillage, uh, you know, uh, Rehoboam, you need to have this as you keep track of your property, essentially, as well. Judgment concerning this. Uh, uh, the righteous need to keep on the paths of judgment. Proverbs chapter 2, we saw that. Uh, so we're seeing different different uh, details, different themes coming up with the idea of judgment. So we'll see that there. And then even Proverbs chapter 21, going into a different topic, still on judgment. Proverbs 21, verse 7. Proverbs 21, verse 7, goes on to say like this. We'll look at a good example in a minute. It says, uh, you know, talking about the wicked, the just, and judgment. It says uh, there, the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. Now, the best way I can think of the robbery of the wicked, and you find that word of truth, I would think of Judas. But the robbery of the wicked... Uh, shall destroy them, you know, end up you know, committing suicide uh, because they refuse to do judgment. Maybe he didn't judge enough thinking about who the Lord was, or maybe he had misjudged who the Lord was. And however you want to study that out and you know, use that example just as a random example. Uh, and there's other robberies. Well, you can think of Gehazi, uh, one of the prophet's servants, was, was a stealing as well. But, you know, the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. And Judas is an example. The Pharisees are an example. Uh, Matthew 23, 23 talks about how they would rather uh, focus on the wrong things. And they don't focus on judgment. They focus on how much uh, time the human somebody will give them. Uh, but it goes through like that. If we look at, say, uh, a good cross-reference, cross Proverbs chapter 9, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 16. Senior says, uh, I got this here. It says, uh, Whoso is uh, simple, let him uh, turn in hither. And uh, as for him that wanteth understanding, uh, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. You see this uh, laid out here, but more so, what we're looking to see in. Uh, this layout here is also Proverbs ten six. 
Their blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covered the mouth of the wicked. The violence part was what we were just seeing, just a rough example of with Judas. But you're also seeing as violence covered the mouth of the wicked, blessings are upon the head of the just. Again, you can see Judas as an example of the wicked and the robber and so on and so forth in these different Proverbs. And how judgment would have needed to be used, but the wicked refused to uh, use judgment. Uh, blessings are upon the head of the just. And again, there's this idea of the just again coming up when you look at judgment. And we said earlier, justice and judgment are kind of side by side when you see these different Proverbs. So we see this come up here, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6. So whether it's Proverbs chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 13, uh, we'll get into some other ones. And we're looking at Proverbs chapter 21, the wicked, the just, and judgment. This is the theme we're looking at as we go through these different Proverbs. Even if we look at Proverbs 29, we'll see a lot in Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29, verse 4. What I may do is just give out the cross-references. Proverbs 29, verse 4. As we saw earlier, we were looking at the wicked, the just, and the concept of judgment. Now we're looking at the king and judgment, more specifically. And we see in Proverbs 29, verse 4, says, Whoso loveth, I'm sorry, uh, the king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. So again, that goes back to receiving a gift, a false balance, wrong, diverse weights. Uh, the land will get overthrown if a king accepts something like that. Uh, we see the king by judgment establishing the land. We see that there. And so uh, some cross-references I'll give out. You can see, uh, you know, a bad king in uh, um, 1 Samuel 13, 13. Under that, it's gonna, you see King Saul as he ruins his kingdom. You'll see a good king in 2 Samuel eight fifteen, which was King David. We already turned there and saw that a little bit earlier. A good king who establishes his kingdom. You know, by judgment establishes the land, and he did justice and judgment. We saw that earlier. So those are some good um, cross references there. But some proverbs that I'll just give out as time runs short is some proverbs you can cross reference proverbs with proverbs. It is for Proverbs twenty nine four looking at the king and judgment. You can also look at Proverbs sixteen twelve, Proverbs twenty five five, Proverbs thirteen thirteen, and uh, I might leave you with that uh, on this issue of the king and judgment. If we stay in Proverbs 29 and we go to verse 14, we'll see the next issue on judgment as we stay on the topic of judgment, no matter where we're going. We saw before we were looking at the wicked, the just, and judgment. Then we looked at the king and judgment. Now we're looking at the poor and judgment, and how a king should judge them. And it says there in verse 14 in Proverbs 29, the king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. So we're seeing the right concept there on how the king shall properly judge the poor. He says that there. And you can see this come up in, in Psalms a lot. Comes up in uh, Psalm 82. Comes up in there in verse 2 and 3. Uh, Psalm 72, it comes up all throughout that chapter. And so I want to leave that cross-reference with you there. Psalm 72, verse 2. Psalm 82, verse 2. Just want to leave you with those two as our time runs short and give you those verses for you to cross refer to Proverbs 29 14. Proverbs 29 verse 26 goes on to say, Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. And so we see this here. Now, when we talk about this, in, in the prophetic scriptures, in prophecy, when you see the prophecy program taking place, you see a lot of judgment coming from the Lord on certain individuals where uh, the Lord will judge an individual saying, here's essentially, in the, in the prophecy program, I got plans for you. So there's going to be certain judgments that will come down on uh, Joseph or Daniel. And there's some things that are going to happen to you uh, that will come directly from me to you in the prophecy program. It doesn't happen to us today. Um, we're, either, we're either saved or lost based on whether we decide to trust the gospel or not. But uh, when it says, many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. And so we see that in verse 26. But we think of the idea of Joseph, he was taken away. And then later on, he was established in Egypt. Uh, but those judgments of him being taken away, those judgments of what had happened 
you know, those came from the Lord in the prophetic program. He intervened, he acted, he did those certain things, but we saw that in the end that it was, you know, all this came from the Lord, his judgments on Joseph to set him up to be that ruler in Egypt. Uh, when it came to Daniel, he was also taken away and he was established. And righteous judgment was you know, judged accordingly. That's John 7, 24, judge righteous judgment. We see that there. Now, if we go to Proverbs 31, verse 8, as we kind of wrap up kind of everything we're seeing. Proverbs 31, verse 8. I remember seeing this all based on you know, God's covenant with Israel. And even before that, like we just said with Joseph, there was no Israel when Joseph was around. Proverbs 31, verse 8 says there, Open thy mouth for the dumb and all the cause and, and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So in this case, some of the poor and needy need their causes pleaded for them. And when that's done, they'll need to be judged righteously in these decisions, in these situations. And Solomon's telling Rahabon, you know, your judgment's going to be needed for other people's cases. And this is something that's going to be needed to be done in the case that the, we saw with Solomon and the two women earlier. So we see that there, and the point is going to be the judge righteously. And again, you can see that back in Leviticus chapter 19 when that was a law that it, I mean, uh, when there was something that the law said, Israel, you have to keep this. So, and this all goes back to, again, Genesis chapter 12, the, the not only you know, a part of the law, but also a part of the covenant, where we saw that there, where it says, judge, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. You're going to have descendants. You're going to have a land where there's going to be rich and poor. There's going to be needy and those that are rich. Uh, just in these different things, it's not about social justice per se, as we're looking at it in our society today, but these are issues. These are people that are going to be in the land of Israel, the 12 tribes, and there's going to be a king there. And Solomon is saying to Rahabon, when it comes to justice, when it comes to judgment, these proverbs are going to help sharpen you up to have more wisdom, to guide your nation into where it needs to go if you lay up for yourself sound wisdom, if you lay up for yourself these issues of justice and issues of judgment. So you can go ahead and have that fear of the Lord so you can have the law and the covenants work for you in your in your favor. Uh, you know, having this you know, extra uh, amount of wisdom working in your favor. But it has to be studied, it has to be learned. So we see this here. When we look at judgment, just as we looked at what Paul had to say concerning justice, and we looked at 2 Corinthians and Romans 11 and Romans 3, Paul, of course, also talks about the idea of judgment. And if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, First Corinthians 2.15. Who was the apostle to say concerning the church, the body of Christ? He says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. So when we get to the part where we see this issue of uh, you know, Matthew 7.7, 7, and it says, you know, you know the part about, uh, you know, the famous verse that gets used, you know, quite a bit on people, you know, every so often, or, or quite a bit. You see there, it talks about, in uh, Matthew 7, 7, it says, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 7, judge not, that you be not judged. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with measure ye meet, it shall be measured uh, to you again. As it says that there, I know this is the Lord Jesus Christ talking to the hypocrites in the audience. And as he says this to the hypocrites in the audience, this is to whom the Lord is speaking. And as he uh, speaks this to them, this is the judgment that uh, the Lord talks about in Matthew 7. Now, when we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, he's saying, He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. And as we see this laid out here, this is where the judgment is going forth. Uh, for the church of the body of Christ, we can judge all things if we're spiritual. And if we're spiritual, we see some certain terms for the spiritual man is able to judge all things, uh, the spiritual saint. And this is what we read in 2 Corinthians 2, 15. We know that we're going to be judging the world and we're going to be judging angels. We know that from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. He says, do ye not uh, know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? 
uh, but much more things that pertain to this life. And so we see this here in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2 and 3. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 15. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 15 says, I speak as the wise men, judge ye what I say. So he's telling the Corinthians who are deplorable in their behavior, he tells them to judge what I say as if you were wise men. Not all of them are spiritual, but he's telling them start to judge what's being said so you can operate in wisdom, operate in understanding. says this there. And then he talks more about the idea of judgment in Romans chapter 2, verse 1. In Romans chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. It says this here. And then if you look at, uh, I believe it's uh, verse 12 of Romans chapter 2, and we'll stop here for today. He says, For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. This is something that he's talking about throughout the course of time. But this is something nonetheless we're seeing that this is what Paul talks about when it comes to there's no respect to persons, which was what Proverbs was also mentioning. It's right to have no respect to persons and that specific judgment related to this earthly king. So, see, we kind of went through a lot, but the point was when we see that according to the law, 613 points of law, and according to the covenants of Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3, that these, these uh, proverbs are being taught from Rehoboam, I'm sorry, from Solomon to Rehoboam about Levitical justice, Levitical judgment, and that if he's going to be a wise king, he's going to adhere to and lay up sound wisdom and sound judgment for uh, himself as a king, leading Israel forward in whatever's going to be coming his way. Uh, now, we know with scriptures, I'm studying to read it, actually, Israel falls apart under his leadership. But nonetheless, he had at his disposal what his father, uh, King Solomon, left for him. So it's not that like he was left uh, empty-handed. And so I mean, we all have the same thing. We have 66 books of Scripture. We can go ahead and study, read, learn, and grow from all day long. Uh, so we have the same uh, wisdom at our disposal that we can study and read and learn. But nonetheless, this is what we're finding here. As we go through the book of Proverbs, we see that we can go through and see all sorts of different proverbs that I talk about judgment and justice. And I mean, today alone, we went through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven proverbs on just judgment. And we went through one, two, three, four, five proverbs on justice, which had different cross references, which led to other proverbs, which led to the law, which led to the covenant. And so these all connect. All these different themes connect with the other different themes. And so this will continue to lead us into other themes in the Proverbs as we continue to study it, not verse by verse, uh, not word by word, but theme by theme. And as we look at the prophetic themes we find in the book of Proverbs, we're finding it's not written to the church, the body of Christ, but it's written more so for a prophetic audience, that they would increase in wisdom abide in wisdom, and we can, of course, read this for our benefit. It's all written for our learning. We can learn and abound in wisdom as well. But we have at our disposal the manifold wisdom of God that we find in Ephesians chapter 3, and we can continue to abide and abound in wisdom as we continue to study all of the Word of God and rightly divide it and understand it in its proper context. So with that, we'll stop here and see if there's any kind of thoughts or questions through seeing justice and judgment in the book of Proverbs. You know, there's so much richness in this, um, and again, it, you know, it's not for us to follow. These are not our marching orders, but there certainly is a lot, like you said, that we can still learn, you know, and, and one of that is who God is. You know, when you understand, like all judgment, you know, if, if you did something wrong, you know, it's recognized and, and for them did not go unpunished. And... Uh, you know, so that tells you, you know, what God thinks about, you know, doing wrong and all that kind of stuff, you know. And it's something to take with you and to know because God doesn't change. So he's still the same today as he was back then. He just deals with us differently now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's still the same God. Yeah. Same likes, dislikes. Yeah.
Yeah. Now that's important. Yeah, absolutely. But even though I know it, uh, and I will not do this, but it is so tempting to take some of these things that you brought out. And since so many people think they're Israel today, yet these are the same people that are respecter of persons and, oh, yeah. you know, and all that kind of stuff. You know, it would be so tempting to say, hey, look at this. You know, but oh, you, you, know, can show, you can show them the scripture. You can, but, but it's not to us today. I mean, it's not our marching orders. No, no. It's, it's not who we are. No, it's not our marching order. You could show them something if you thought it would teach them something. Well, that that's that's the caveat. <laughs> yeah. That's the caveat. Yeah. Yeah. And if there's any other thoughts or comments or anything, well, actually, Wednesday we'll go right back into this and we'll do another theme from the Book of Proverbs, uh, just continuing this just for another uh, for for a little bit. We'll do some themes, we'll get some lessons and some studies going, and then uh, we'll continue. Just do topical lessons. And uh, we'll kind of stay in this subject matter for a bit. And we'll see where we go with this. As you're presenting this, we are seeing the manifold, many layers of wisdom of God. Yeah. And by that's, doing it by theme, that's that's a interesting way to approach it. Yeah, but it's meant to focus on, on Solomon, Proverbs and everything, but then compare it to Paul mm. and see how today, if you're looking for wisdom, it's at the cross. If you're looking for justice, it's at the cross. If you're looking for, you know, can compare and contrast and everything mm. else. But that, I guess that opens up the manifold of wisdom a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. So, so yeah. And if there's any other thoughts, we'll stop here and we'll uh, continue uh, Wednesday with more Proverbs. Mm. So, all right, we'll, uh, we'll see everybody uh, on Wednesday. Bye, everybody. Don't eat too many hot dogs and hamburgers tomorrow. July 4th. Everyone take care. <laughs>